This is a solar-powered security light with a 3-watt LED uh, that I bought on eBay and I bought it from a UK seller this time because uh, I couldn't find a similar light on just general searching eBay for the sort of, you know, security, out, you know, solar-powered security light. And it meant it was a bit more expensive, but I thought it was quite a stylish looking unit with a fairly large solar panel, which is nice. So uh, fundamentally, it's got this fairly chunky lens with a reflector and a high power LED behind it and then the pass for infrared sensor there. Oh, that just uh, that felt like it moved slightly. Oh, it does. Slightly looseish. Hope that's not a... Then again, it would be pointing down, so it wouldn't, that wouldn't be a water ingress point. So let's uh, open it up. I've been trying this outside and it's really quite impressive. Oh, that's a... Uh, that's not going to... That's got deep screws. One moment, please. I'll use my special deep screw screwdriver. The one slight downside of these uh, miniature screws is they're fine for shallow cases, but if you've got a deep case, then the sometimes the shaft gets in the way. It, the, you get longer versions that have uh, sort of extended narrow sections, but uh, I don't know if I've got a set of those. Maybe I have somewhere. But this will do in the meantime. So I wonder if it's going to be... I guess it's probably going to be a lithium, but it could be nickel metal hydride cells, not 100% sure. Lithium would be quite nice. Big chunky lithium. It says it lasts 8 hours at 3 watt LED and a full charge, so that's going to suggest quite a lot, because... Um, okay, that that would suggest that is a small lithium cell. It says one thousand milliamp hour. Uh, divider. Yeah, that's not going to that's not going to drive a three watt LED at full power that long. So I get the feeling they're just being a bit ambitious with the numbers there. So it's very simple. It's just two wires coming from that. So this will be one of these protected cells again, I'm guessing. There'll be a bit of protection under this tape here, the little circuit board. And they've got the solar panel has the black coming straight from the negative. It's got a diode there on the positive, um, and then straight to the solar panel, so the, the lithium cell. So that cell must be protected. And once again, the solar panel is just uh, like that... Um, like this light that I did in an earlier video, it just seems to be relying on the fact that the solar panel only puts out about, uh, let's see, what, what volts does this put out? Whoa, it's all coming to bits. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sections, roughly half a volt each, 5.5 .5 volts, probably, sort of 5.5 .5 to 6 volts on a very bright day open circuit. Um, and the current from that will be probably about, I guess, 100 milliamps um, or thereabouts uh, on a bright day and less on another day. So uh, between that, the, it, that, I don't think it can put out enough current to overcharge this in terms of the current input. And as soon as this has its full voltage on it, it's just going to, it's just going to turn off the, uh, any input from the charging circuit. So then this will just go open circuit about 6 volts, which is completely harmless. So that's uh, what they're doing there for the power. The detector PCB, I'm looking at all this uh, ceiling, which is quite good. What about the rest of the case? Oh, I see a seal in there as well. Um, this probably has a fairly standard PIR chip in it. This is quite odd. Look at all the all the through hole, uh, plated through holes in that, it's covered in them. Let's uh, pop that off as well then. Is that for heat dissipating? I'm not really sure actually. I doubt it's for current capability. There's the PIR sensor with the, the, and an LDR, so it only lights at night. Couple of electrolytics, not much else on that side other than the LED. Let's pop the reflector off as well. Oh, I've just dropped. 
something, I'm not sure what it was. There's always an avalanche going on around here. There's just too much stuff. The LED itself has a, this... Um, it's got a, its own plated through holes coming through here to help spread the heat onto the back as, to aid the thermal dissipation. I wonder if that's to try and spread the heat about so that the passive infrared sensor doesn't get swamped. Um, so it's almost like a heat sink plane that it just keeps everything fairly constant temperature so there's no uh, external interference. Not really sure about that. I don't know how sensitive, sensitive they'd be to that. Certainly if the LED is being ridden, run at a, a mod, modest current then it's going to get warmish. So the LED has two tracks and a sort of common, you know, I think that is all a heat plane for the LED because uh, it, it is all common together and it's that sort of crosshatch effect. I'm not sure if that really helps much. So yeah, they're trying to use the whole circuit board as a sort of general heat plane. That's quite extreme. That's quite odd. The LED comes to these two contacts. I see the transistor for switching it there. And I'm guessing that's the resistor for it. Point six eight ohms. That would it says R six eight oh. I think that's point six eight ohms. That is probably it. And it's leading up to the middle pin. I guess that's an NPN transistor. Uh, that's leading up to the middle pin of what I th thought initially when I opened this was a um, an actual LED driver, but I'm not convinced if it is. One three o dash one. That's a three volt regulator, if I'm not mistaken, which would also uh, justify the capacitor across it. The chip is a uh, oh okay BIS. Is that eight thousand? Yeah, it looks like BIS eight thousand. The BIS instantly comes to mind. Oh, BIS 80001, and I recognise the BIS as being a fairly common range of the passive infrared detector chips. So yeah, I'm going to check that resistor for its actual resistance value, although it's so low that it might be a bit tricky to measure with the meter, because, well, basically because it's such a low value. Yeah, this is going to be a bit tricky. Yeah, I reckon that is about 0.68 or so. Yep, that is very low value. So I wonder what voltage will be across it when the LED is running. That will give us a clue. Uh, let's say I check the voltage first from the lithium cell itself. So there's the... Uh, I can go directly onto there for the negative. I can go directly onto there for the positive. Well that's handy. So the lithium cell is currently at 3.8 volts. It's new. I've not really had it in the sunshine much. Um, so let's measure uh, what voltage when it's on. Am I going to be able to actually run this now? No, because it's detecting the, the light overhead. I'll try and trip that by putting it into the dark and turning it on. There it goes. So that's let, let's measure the voltage across that resistor. It's going to be low. Oh god, it's very low. It's about 0.28 volt. Okay. I equals V over R. 0.28 divided by, and what was that value of resistor? Of, was it 0 0.68? 0 0.68 equals, actually it's about 400 milliamps at that. So um, that, that's not bad really. 
Um, it's certainly, it, it's not running it at three watts. But having said that, 4.2, actually, no, if it's got a regulator, it's going to keep that fairly constant. I wonder if the regulator is partly for the, the chip or if it's just for the LED. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, they're not going to get the eight hours that they're talking about, they're, they actually mention continuous actuation if it's fully charged. And that's, if that holds 1,000 milliamp power, and the chip is, be, the LED is being driven round about 400 milliamps, then it's only going to last about two hours uh, with continuous activation. So they're telling that a book is there. Uh, the voltage may just trail down a bit. I'm not 100% sure. That is a low dropout regulator, if I recall. Yeah, so it's... You know, other than the little porkies about the uh, cell, which is a shame because, you know, this uh, solar panel... Actually, if you think of it, if there's eight hours of sunlight in a day and it puts it out about 100 milliamps, uh, then you, the maximum it can really do is charge this up to, you know, 1,000 milliamp hour is going to be uh, more than enough, really. But, um, that does... I mean, it, it's, you're not going to get the eight hours of continuous operation at... Uh, at their, uh, what they seem to imply is three watts. It's just over one watt, really. Um, I would say that it's dissipating and you're, you're not even going to get, uh, you're going to get about two hours from that. But, yep, other than that, you know, the construction of it's quite nice. It's chunky. So I'm thinking I may actually put this outside because I was walking about with it today and holding it up different locations around the garden that it could be mounted. And it's actually a surprising output, even for, you know, that you know, just basically one watt. Um, it's really not bad at all. So, um, yeah, it's quite a nice unit. It looks very stylish too, very uh, futuristic. Okay, I've done a little bit more investigation. Um, I thought the LED was being fed from that regulator because it was in the vicinity and it certainly seemed to be coming from that route. But the LED is being fed directly from the battery output via the resistor. So as the voltage in the battery reaches a fuller charge, it will actually drive that LED at a significant current, potentially up to the full 3 watts. But as the voltage of the cell gradually goes down from 4 down to 3, the current will steadily decrease. It will go down like 2 watt, 1 watt, less. So technically speaking, Yes, after a long amount of continuous operation, it could still be putting out light, but it wouldn't be putting out anywhere near as much as when it started. So they, they might, they could, you know, they're being a bit, they're shuffling the truth a little bit, but, you know, it's all right. I, I don't see this light being actuated continually, uh, twin, you know, for like all night long, so to speak. So um, I think it will do actually quite well. Um, it, it, will, as I say, reduce in its output intensity, but uh, that's not such a great deal. Um, now, the heat sinking, yeah, if that is initially putting out pretty much that full power, because it is just that 0.68 ohm resistor in the transistor switching that directly across this cell, then that is going to probably get quite a cosy circuit board. So that does explain all these uh, plated through holes and basically treating both sides of the circuit board as a general sink. So, eh, I, I like this. I do actually really like this light. Um, I'm going to stick it up outside and that will give it the proper waterproofing test. But um, yeah, it, it's stylish. It's, uh, it, it's bright, certainly, when it's uh, got a fresh charge in it. And uh, the size of the solar panel means that even on a rather grim Scottish or Isle of Man day, it's still going to put a bit of charge in here, and given the amount of use it'll be getting in my garden, um, that should probably be pretty bright most of the time when it's activated. So yeah, it's it's actually, I, I do like this, it's, it's quite a neat light. Oh, another thing that's worth mentioning is this little bridge that lifts a cell above this uh, solar panel. I like that because it kind of isolates it thermally, and it supports it properly with this tie wrap, and Quite frankly, you could upgrade it if you wanted. You could stick in uh, bigger cells if you wanted. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's really, it's quite a nice design. It really is actually quite a smart little light. Yeah, I do like that a lot.